After a season-opening setback at Virginia Tech, the Liberty Flames are ready to play their first home game. Saturday, for the first time, Liberty welcomes Jacksonville to Williams Stadium. Flames head coach Turner Gill says his team took a lot of positives away from week one. I think the thing that we learned from it is that we saw our guys being able to respond. Uh, I didn't think it was a total, total mismatch. There were some, maybe one or two areas where they had some better players than we had per se, but I, I think our guys showed their themselves. Uh, I think they showed uh, their, their teammates and us coaches that, you know, we can play together. For a second straight week, the Flames will face a new opponent with a new coaching staff. Dolphins head coach Ian Shields is the former offensive coordinator at Army, and he spent the last two seasons as head coach at Lenore Ryan. That makes film study and preparation a challenge for the Flames. It's a guessing game. I, I really, I would, I would love to tell you I got some type of insight, uh, but I really don't. Uh, you know, what, what we're preparing for is a little bit of Army and a little bit of Lenore Ryan. And like I said, Lenore Ryan is more YouTube video. And so uh, it's just going to really be a guessing game. But like I said, I'm excited because, like I said, that's where the preparation comes in. Put it somewhat similar to maybe Kennesaw State, Georgia Tech, uh, the Armies, Navies, the, those type of offenses, what we anticipate them to run. Uh, but last year they ran a spread option, I mean a spread offense. Uh, a no huddle offense, so you, we really don't know which way they're going to go. The Dolphins offense is labeled as spread option, but triple option tendencies are present. The Dolphins return all Patriot League back Ulysses Bryant, who averaged five yards per carry last year and led the team with four rushing touchdowns. Quarterback Rylan Wells is a redshirt sophomore who threw eight touchdown passes and just one pick in a non-starting role last year. In the past, the Flames have struggled with option-based teams, but they feel confident heading into Saturday. A lot of it really boils down to, as I've talked to those coaches, personnel, uh, being able to run from sideline to sideline at the linebacker position. And uh, so I feel real excited about the opportunity this year to showcase how we can respond to the option just because we have some young men uh, that displayed last Saturday that we can run from sideline to sideline. We've had guys in the past, you know, Coach Wimbo's talked about it, guys that were not as athletic as – we are now, you know, the end. You know, our linebacker, you know, linebackers were not as athletic as they are now. The D line wasn't as athletic as they are now. The Flames' defense played well early last week in Blacksburg, but that unit grew tired in the second half as the offense struggled to move the ball. Flames quarterback Stefan Masha completed just nine passes for 70 yards in his first start since 2014. Offense got to execute way better. You know, um, I learned from my mistakes, um, different guys' mistakes, so I know what I have to do better, um, make um, better reads. Obviously, Virginia State was a very good defense, so I know learning from them will help me going into the rest of this season you know, to execute better um, for the offense and just keeping the defense off the field, keeping them at a bad place. He hasn't wavered by any means. He's, he's that kind of young man that not much is going to bother him. You know, he's internally motivated. He's, you know, he doesn't need me to get after him or anyone to get after him. He pushes himself pretty hard. This week, the Flames will be facing a Dolphins defense led by longtime defensive guru and former Army head coach Rich Ellerson. In the past, his schemes have resembled that of the old 46 look from the late Buddy Ryan. Ellerson has talent to work with, including senior defensive end and NFL hopeful Justin Horton and senior all-conference linebacker Grady Redding. Uh, it's definitely going to be different watching, you know, probably over 100 plays on film of them. It's, it's definitely a unique thought process. They might have some guy, three guys with their hand in the ground, maybe just two guys with their hand in the ground, whether they be split out, they bring a lot of internal pressure, and it's, it's definitely one of the stranger things I've seen, but we have to be assignment sharp. It's kind of an odd defense. They're, they do things that is unexpected, like they line their DN up on a wide receiver outside or the DN is off the ball one yard with it's like standing up. So we just have to account for everybody on the defense and know what the personnel is and expect for what person to be where at. They do some unique things defensively and so um, you know, for us it's really about covering guys up you know in the internal and external runs being able to hold up pass protection wise just because you never know there's new wrinkles uh, to every system going into the season so we don't quite sure know what they're going to do. Um, so we're prepared for everything and anything that may possibly come uh, from their base alignments. The Flames offensive line will have to cut back on a few procedural penalties here this week. Last week in Blacksburg, all told, Liberty had 13 penalties for 75 yards. Now, Coach Turner Gill has made some changes up along the offensive line, moving Aaron Campbell from right guard to right tackle and putting Ethan Crawford at right guard. 
The Flames will also look to cut back on turnovers after turning it over four times last week. The Flames last year had only 11 turnovers, the second fewest in FCS football. Kickoff on Saturday night here in Williams Stadium set for 7 o'clock. Liberty has won its last three home openers. In Lynchburg, for the Liberty Flames Sports Network, I'm Nick Pierce.